Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to state and debate. In this corner, we have Werehog Fan 944. And in the other corner, we have Xpool. For our first debate of the night, is Rockadoodle a good movie? I panicked. I can't debate about Rockadoodle. That film released the same year as Sonic 1. I can't possibly associate that year with anything else. Except for the Balkan Wars, oddly. Paul, well, how about instead of debating about Rockadoodle like a 45 year old, how about we debate about Sonic stuff instead? I'm not talking about the Balkan Wars. When a Sonic the Hedgehog conversation starts up, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Potential and kinetic energy, apparently. Debates in the Sonic community have been around since we've moved from the forums to Twitter.com. Oh no, they were still in the forums, it just wasn't as severe. Debates in general is a good thing, but what happens when debates are either freaking stupid or just go too far? Well, I'll be talking about a mix of both today. I've got some topics for debate today, and I'm gonna see if given my takes gives me the skills necessary to go back on Satan debate. Alright, what's first on the shopping block? Maybe Rockadoodle wasn't that bad of an idea. So apparently this is about Sonic's muzzle curve being dominant over his eyes. It started with some dude on Twitter posting an image of the Sonic theme logo with the added adventure muzzle that makes him look like he's trying not to laugh at a Pentagon joke. Apparently at some point in the 2000s, Sega just got rid of this from Sonic's design and nobody batted an eye. Wait, scratch that. Most of us didn't bat an eye. This debate is so freaking stupid. Like, I get it. Sonic can look raw when his muzzle is dominating, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing that it isn't as prominent. Sonic still has an incredibly appealing design no matter what. He can still look cool and still look cute even without the crazy curves. Oh, I'm sorry. Yue Kawa's original art had the curve, which means Sonic's design has to be like this all the time. Sorry, guys. Anything post-Heroes is bad now because Twitter said so. Alright, what could possibly top this one? You've gotta be kidding me. Alright, I get it. Sonic unleashes a crazy, controversial, and very high budget game that many people hold very close to their hearts. Objectively, considering the visuals, cutscenes, and the polish, this is probably the best Sonic game ever made. I don't think that's a debate, that's an actual fact. Still doesn't mean I like it that much though. Don't get me wrong, there's so much to love about Sonic Unleashed. The day stages give a crazy adrenaline rush, the story isn't bad, the cutscenes are actual masterpieces, the different countries are vast and unique, and the music is among some of the best in the series. But there's so much dogging it down from becoming something that I deem great. The Werehog is slow and repetitive. It wouldn't be so bad if it didn't constantly slap you into forced beat em up sections with that stupid jazz music every time. No, this isn't actually too bad. The tornado sections are really just extended QTEs that I don't necessarily dread, but there's something that I wouldn't really go back to. The metal collecting is such a drag, artificially extending the game's length by making me grind previous stages just to get to Jungle Joyride Day. Why does it increase the numbers by so much at the very end? Overall, Sonic Unleashed is an objectively incredibly well-made game, but there are just too many downsides in my opinion from saying that this is up there with some of the greats. Please be civil with me about this one. Wait, I already talked about this. Recently, Ian Flynn, one of the writers for Sonic, said on his podcast, The Bumblecast, to not worry about any of the ages of the characters after the public freakout that occurred when they removed Sonic's age from the Sonic Channel website. Now, I've already discussed Sonic's age specifically before, so I'm not really going to add on anything. In short, do the ages of Sonic characters matter? Yes. Are you out of your mind? The IDW Sonic comics are known in the Sonic community for two things, apparently. Having Sonic show compassion and ruining Sonic's character design, both of which makes it terrible, I guess. The apparent culprit is the main artist, Evan Stanley, and writer Ian Flynn. Apparently, Evan ruined Sonic's design by having the Cyclops have a similar look to the movie, having a single line connecting the two lines in a way. And Ian, to a certain extent, Evan as well, ruined Sonic's character by making him willing to make peace with his enemies and not try to kill them on the spot. Notice how I've used apparent in every sentence. Now, I may be a little biased, because I'm a huge fan of Evan's work on IDW and her original series, Ghost of the Future, but I don't understand how we could be fine with this, but not this. It's just Sonic, but his eyes look like the 2016 Build-A-Bear now. Are y'all really gonna look at this thing straight in the eyes and call it mid? Are you? It's just a freaking art style. If Evan was still relegated to doing fan art, you'd all be praising her as one of the greats. But now that she's buddy-buddy with Azuka, she's mid now. And with Ian and Evan's work on the writing side, I don't get how the community did a full 180 on them, praising their work in Archie and early IDW, having the characters be represented in ways that the games couldn't, begging for Ian Flynn to write for the games. Now, 
Sonic's apparently out of character for wanting to give his enemies the same respect as he would anyone else. Has Sonic never been in character? I don't understand why we can praise Sonic and the Black Knight for having this ending where Sonic reasons with the woman who literally just beat him to near death, but the second that IDW dares to do something similar, it's out of character. He still fights people if he wants, but he's not trying to not reason with them whatsoever. No, IDW Sonic isn't poorly designed or poorly characterized. It's just that apparently the second someone that isn't Japanese gets a hold on Sonic writing, it's immediately bad. Wait, do you guys think this is racially motivated? Stop. Should Sonic have the M word? Well, I really don't care, but I think the M word is freaking hilarious, so I'll discuss it anyway. So, in the classic games and a few of the earlier 3D games, one of your main ways of gaining speed was through the use of kinetic energy, or as the kids like to call it, momentum. Oh, sorry. Momentum. It was a really fun way to speedrun stages and gain as much speed as humanly possible. But then, in 2005, something happened. In Shadow the Hedgehog, they removed momentum. And everyone complained. No, they didn't. They complained that Shadow the Hedgehog was a terrible game. I won't deny that it's fun to mess around with momentum, but I'm not going to act like it's what makes Sonic games fun. You have the day stages in Unleashed, the modern stages from Generations, and the open zone in Frontiers. All of these games are still fun in their own right without the use of momentum. Sure, it would be nice to be able to manipulate the level design sometimes, but I'm not betting my life on it. It's a freaking video game. It's just a video game. That's it! I've got my perfect argument! I'm gonna go back on state in debate and counter any arguments about fiction. Alright, our second debate of the night. What was the best Balkan War? Son Ali is better than Son Amy. <laughs> <laughs>